five weeks before all I told you before occurred, and we were at war. Uh, we get weaker and weaker, we're straggling, and you want to know when is this going to end. In 1944, American soldiers were sent to the Philippines to help build the Philippine Army. The Philippines are in South Asia. They are a group of islands. The Philippine Army was inexperienced. The United States was trying to make sure that the Philippines would be ready in case of an attack by the Empire of Japan. On December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Japanese. On December 8, 1941, Japanese forces began their invasion of the Philippines. On the same day, the United States declared war on the Empire of Japan. American and Filipino soldiers began a planned retreat to the peninsula of Bataan on the main island of Luzon. On April 9, 1942, the American General Edward King, who was in charge of the American and Filipino soldiers, surrendered to the Japanese. The surrender was the result of a lack of supplies and reinforcements. Of the 75,000 prisoners at Bataan, they encountered torture in many different forms. During the march and afterward, they encountered physical torture, torture by neglect, and torture by being forced to live in inhumane conditions. On April 10, 1942, Captain Beverly M. Scarden, known to his friends as Ben, was captured by the Japanese on the southernmost end of the Bataan Peninsula. Ben had been hospitalized with recurrent malaria. He had just recently become able to walk Ben marched approximately 80 miles over a nine-day period. He marched from Marvelas to San Fernando, Pampanga, where he was boarded onto a train to be taken to Camp O'Donnell. The march to Camp O'Donnell is commonly known as the Bataan Death March. Different soldiers marched different distances depending on where they were captured. During the march, prisoners were subject to acts of physical torture, including beatings, stabbings, and executions. But it was about the second or third day, there were two American soldier bodies right out in the middle of a, the road. They had been run over so many times, they looked like a, a cardboard cutout. There was no expression or anything, just the outline and the crust thing. And you see, I thought, well, I ought to get the dog tags. Mm -hmm. Well, these trucks are going. <laughs> back and forth, and I figured, no, the minute I'd leave that column, I'd get a bayonet, yeah. or oh, anybody else would, and so we just gazed at these two guys. Mm -hmm. And But now, that's when you get the feeling something's wrong here, this is a, this is a no win, we're not going not gonna to be easy. The prisoners ate unsalted rice, which was served to them two to three times a day. They were about a cupful at each meal. Without protein or vegetables as a regular part of their diet, the prisoners were generally malnourished. They were often sick and slow to heal from wounds. To add to the food they were given, the prisoners looked for other resources. Well, that's where Henry made a little uh, swatter with a piece of bamboo by slicing it that way or breaking it or whatever he did, and he put little things in there, and he killed these little green frogs on the side of the latrine ditch, and he'd bring a whole batch of them in. But we'd take a piece of wire and uh, down here and put your finger, you'd do like that, get everything out, and then we put him on a piece of tin and toast him. And we ate those things whole and uh, delicious. Prisoners also encountered torture in the form of neglect, such as malnutrition, lack of clean water, and lack of medical attention. At Camp O'Donnell, there was no medical care. Amoebic dysentery meant certain death. Ben suffered from recurring malaria, high fever, chills, sweating, physical weaknesses, dehydration, and sores. Because of malnutrition, many soldiers suffered from beriberi. 
If your feet were even brushed over by an object or another prisoner, it felt as if you were being cut with barbed wire and stabbed with ice picks. My hands were, at one time were so sensitive, I couldn't touch my hair. It felt like barbed wire. Wow. So I had, I had rags around my fingers. All I was concerned with was my feet. It was so sensitive, it felt like you were, we had, you, you jerked every time your pulse beat. Mm. It felt like this nice uh, ice pick was been hit into the bottom of your foot. Initially imprisoned at Camp O'Donnell, Ben was moved to a work camp at Cabana Tuan. While at Cabana Tuan, the prisoners were divided into groups of between 50 and 100 soldiers. American soldiers were kept separate from Filipino soldiers. Dressed in a Japanese style, loincloth, and carrying a water bottle with a string of cloth, they also wore hats if they had one. The soldiers mainly worked on a farm. And as you crawled up there, picking the grass and weeds out, and you do, she took it as long as you can, but if you weren't going fast enough, you'd get a kick in the butt or, or whack across the shoulders or wherever you wanted to hit you. So what we are, you learn to do is, at the corner of your eye, you can see motion. You always knew where those leggings were. And if, you, if, if he goes by you and you see this little about two and a half inch piece of part of okra and it's not too high up, you'd reach up, pull down and take your nail and do like that and put it in your mouth. Two years after being in Cabana Tuan, Ben was transferred to Old Bilibid Prison in Manila, where he would wait shipment to Japan. On December 13, 1944, Ben and 1,600 other prisoners were loaded onto the Oryoku Maru, an unmarked prison ship. He would spend the next 47 days in completely inhumane conditions. The prison ships were known as the Hell Ships. By the end of his trip, over 1,200 of the prisoners died. Ben weighed 90 pounds. We were jammed in the hole, each man sitting in the crotch of the man behind him, like that, in these shelves. They had 900 of us in this hole that I was in. There wasn't any place to walk or sit. No, you couldn't even, uh, there was no, no place to have for a latrine, no water, no food. So, and it was boiling hot. The inhumane conditions on the hell ships were sometimes too much for the prisoners, and some would try to escape. None were ever successful. Uh, he says, I'm going to get out of here, and he goes up the ladder, and they shot him, and I saw him come back down on these people who were underneath him. By the end of the war, Ben had survived multiple prison camps. A nightmare journey on three hell ships, two of which were sunk by American fighter planes. He had encountered torture through abuse, neglect, and inhumane treatment. But Ben is among the survivors, and we need to hear their stories. I'll just give it to you as grim as I saw it. And I, it, it does me a little bit of good to have people know exactly what they look like and how it happened and all that. 